every Muslim in that religion. Do you not agree? I don't, I don't think you're... I, listen, it'll be used that way by the liberals and by the Islamists. They're going to blame him now for their hatred. But the hatred goes back 1,400 years, by the way. That's something Jay Johnson ought to study, which is a little history. Maybe he didn't learn it in the law books. Islam has been at war with the world for 1,400 years. Do you know that, uh, Dan? Um, I, the exact date? No, I didn't know it was 1,400 years. I did not know yeah, that. No, it didn't start when Israel was created, as the, the college uh, intellectuals would have you believe. It started a long time ago. I'm sending you a little copy of a history book called Government Zero, where the facts are there for you to look at for yourself. I don't make uh, history up. I don't make it up whatsoever. The fact is, the facts are the facts, and you can't change history. It's that simple. You cannot change history. Islam has been at war with the West for 1,400 years. I'm sorry. It's a very uncomfortable statement. It makes people very nervous to believe that. But unfortunately, it's a historical fact. As Islam has emerged from the desert, it has tried to conquer the world. And uh, it succeeded wildly in the first 25 years by beheadings, burnings, lynchings, rape, burning cities to the ground. And then it was stopped when Europe had had enough and beat them back and p chased them out of Europe. I don't have to give you the history again. I've given it to you over and over again. It's been going on for a long time. And for a few hundred years, there was a sort of stasis between moderate Muslims and those around them. For a few hundred years, Jews and Christians and Muslims seem to have gotten along. And then all of a sudden, a wildly insane thing occurred. The Wahhabi sect of Islam was developed out of Saudi Arabia from a, a cleric. Look it up, the Wahhabi sect. You know as the Wahhabi sect. And it preached a form of jihad that we're experiencing now ever since. And you have to ask yourself, when when you know the historical fact... Maybe you should talk about which branch of Islam <laughs> is being practiced from those who are entering the country. Maybe that would help us determine whether or not they're liable to become a, a terrorist. Because it's certainly true that not all Muslims are terrorists, but it's certainly true that some of them are and will be terrorists and will hurt, hurt you and your family. And so you have to ask yourself, well, what branch of Islam do they practice? You see, we're so naive that when you say Islam, you think it's a single mono... Uh, homogeneous group it isn't any more than when you say Christian we have no sophistication when it comes to Islam we're even afraid to ask the question aren't there varieties of Islam uh, varieties of Christianity aren't there varieties of Judaism doesn't it range all over the place from the extremely liberal non-Jew Jews all the way to the other side to the super religious Jewish people who take the Bible literally the same is true in Islam so maybe you ought to give it a not a religious test, but a different kind of litmus test. Maybe you ought to look at what sect of Islam the individual is practicing. Why can't we have this adult discussion? Are we that naive and foolish? Must we think that everything is as black and white as uh, some would have us believe? And so I'm trying to bring some reason to the discussion, incidentally. Now, the reason they want to ban Trump in England is because he said in clip 23-something, you have to hear clip 23 and tell me whether you think this is true or false. Listen to 23. We have places in London and other places that are so radicalized that the police are afraid for their own lives. Uh, we have to be very smart and very vigilant. Okay, well, there are places in London where the police are afraid to go. There's also places in Sweden where the Swedish police won't, won't go. There are places in Denmark where the police won't go. There are places in France where the police won't go. Now, let me ask you something. In these places where the police won't go, in these ghettos in Europe. Are these ghettos centers of Buddhism? No. Are they centers of Hinduism? No. Are these ghettos centers of Judaism? No. Are these ghettos centers of humanism? No. I mean, figure it out. Either where you, you want to live or you want to die. Either you want to use your brains or you want to use your, uh, your, your, your sayings. What do you want to happen for this country to be safe? Let's put it another way. What would you do? All you Trump haters, all of you conservative haters, all of you haters of nationalism, what would you do to stop the next terrorist attack? I'd love to hear that. I'd like to hear some bright lawyers from around America and bright academics who listen to the show because they hate me. 
but they listen to me religiously because I'm getting through to them. I'm saying all the things that they know need to be said and thought about. <clears throat> I'd like to hear from progressive, liberals, Islamists, anybody. What would you do to stop the next terrorist attack? That's all I want to hear from. Jim, did you hear me? That's what I'm asking. If I don't know if my call screener can hear a word I'm saying, it's hard to say when he's busy screening calls. But that's all I want to hear. I'll be back to get those calls and more right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-26. We're talking about the uh, survival of the United States of America and whether we can survive the onslaught of Islamic terror. It's as simple as that. And everyone has a different idea. Now, of course, they're all jumping on Trump for what he said. But I asked liberals to call and tell me and you how you would stop the um, the, the jihad that's going on <clears throat> around the world. Line four, Daniel, WVNN Radio, welcome. Give us your opinion, please. Yes, why don't we allow the president, unabridged, to be able to stop terrorism from being an easy sell? That's part of the, That's a major part of the problem, okay? And what is terrorism? Do we only call terrorism uh, when something happens that it's, in other words, is what Dylan Roof done, is that a terrorism, what he did? No, well, let's forget Dylan Roof. We're not talking about him. We're talking about Muslim terrorism in America and the world. Let's be focused. Let's not change the argument to make your point. How would you stop Muslim terrorists from killing people in the West is the question. We have to stop it from being such an easy sell. We have to stop the propaganda that's going on from some of these uh, so-called conservative radio stations. Okay, and I can... Well, what, what do you mean by the sell? I don't know what you're saying. You're talking in, in, in tongues. What do you mean an easy sell? What's an easy sell? Well, you know, when you have foreign policy that does harm to these nations, okay, do, um, does America really know what the foreign, foreign policies have been before the... No, do you know anything about the history? Do you know anything about the history of Arab-Muslim conquests? No, I'm not as arrogant enough to know. I'm not... I, I, you, well, of course not. You're, you're, you're an uneducated man who's full of yourself and you know nothing. So right away you're blaming America for the attacks. You're blaming the victim, in other words. No, 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 no. Yes, we are victims. But you have to understand... No. No, no. Why don't you listen and maybe you can learn something. Maybe you missed this in school. I don't know. Do you know anything about the history of conquest going back to the early days of uh, the Muslim world? So you're telling me that there's a direct correlation between that and what happens today. Well, wait, sir, you're changing the discussion in order to not make your point, but to miss the point. Uh -huh. Muslim power grew from the time of the death of Muhammad in 6... 30 A.D. until 656, I believe, the death of Uthman, it conquered a huge, huge amount of territory. Arabia became Muslim, Egypt became Muslim, Persia became Muslim, Syria became Muslim. And do you know how it occurred in those 25 years? It's one of the most amazing stories of conquest in the whole history of the world. How was it done, Daniel? I'm not did they, did, but Daniel, did the Muslim Arabs conquer all these nations because of insults to Islam? I don't know the answer to that, and I don't think that you know the answer to that. Okay. Of course I do. That's why. That's why I have a radio show, and you have nothing. That's why you're listening to me is because secretly you want to learn something. You're tired of living in the ignorance that you have been dwelling in all your life. But you have to ask yourself some questions to be honest with yourself. Don't answer me. Answer yourself. How is it that in 25 years they were able to conquer all of these countries? And why did they conquer them? Did they conquer Persia because the Persians were anti-Muslim? Did they conquer Egypt, which at the time was not Muslim, because the Muslim, the Egyptians said something about Muslims? Of course not. Can't you put two and two together? It is a warrior political cult. And they're continuing to do now what their ancestors did then. It's a straight line, Daniel. It has nothing to do with our foreign policy. It has everything to do with their desire to conquer the world and convert the world. And who is they, Daniel? The Islamists, Daniel. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Back to the Savage Nation. Everyone's asking who Jet Johnson is, the head of this this shadowy man. No one knows who he is. He failed us in Boston. I believe he was. I don't know if he was homeland. But let's say he failed us last week, and he went silent and dark. No one heard from him. Now he pops up and says, "Watch out for hateful speech," copying what Loretta, what Lynch said the other day, whatever her first name is. Who is this man? How can they take people like this and make them in charge of protecting us? What does the name Jem mean? It's pronounced J, taken from a Liberian chief who reportedly saved his grandfather's life while his distinguished grandfather, Dr. Johnson, was on a League of Nations mission to Liberia in 1930. Okay, so now we know. Liberian chief. Very nice. Very good. And he was a trial lawyer for a big firm in, on Wall Street. He was born in New York City, the son of Norma who worked for Planned Parenthood. Oh, okay. That's very reassuring. Okay, let's move on. He was an associate at Paul Weiss in New York, etc. You get the picture. Worked for Bill Clinton, worked his way up, blah, blah, blah. Obama loved him so much, he made him the head of the Department of Homeland Security where he's done a, a knock-up job, just the greatest job in the world. Fantastic job. Wonderful Democrat liberal. Just what you'd expect. Disappears after a terrorist attack and then tells us not to say the, the wrong thing about Muslims. It leaves you speechless. This is the head of the Department of Homeland Security who in any other nation would have been fired at the very least, if not indicted for, uh, I don't know, malpractice? The terror attack occurred last week, and this jerk is telling us not to vilify Muslims. And to top it off, he's going to hold a press conference at a mosque tied to Muslim Brotherhood. Hamas. This is Jeb Johnson. Does anyone know who this man is? Does anyone know why Obama has not fired him? Does anyone know why this jerk still has his job? The answer is quite clear, because we have no opposition press, no opposition party, and the people are completely stymied, not knowing why this government is so soft-peddling Muslim terrorism in America and around the world. So, okay, here we are. So, so who is ISIS? The best I could figure it out, this is a direct result of Obama withdrawing troops from Iraq prematurely when his general said, don't withdraw all American troops from Iraq because you're going to create a power vacuum. It's exactly what happened. So Obama owns ISIS. He created them by taking all our troops out after they had died and been maimed subduing and pacifying the Sunni triangle. Remember the Sunni triangle and the heyday of the Iraq war? This is now the cancer, the center of the cancer. They were subdued. Obama said, now let's all leave Iraq and we'll all get along. Well, okay, he owns this. So these are Saddam Hussein's, the best I can figure out, extremely experienced, murderous, uh, revolutionary guard. Do you remember when Bush went into Iraq, what happened? Remember he stopped at a certain point and people argued whether he should arrest or kill all of the members of the Iraq Revolutionary Guard. Remember that discussion? Well, here we are. The cancer is back. They are the worst murderers on the planet. They're all trained in Saddam Hussein's army. And now they're spreading like a cancer around the world because we have no real opposition in the West. We have weaklings and corrupt politicians. Now, having said that, this is a very difficult issue for all of us. They bend over backwards to, let us say, sanctify, yes, sanctify the Muslim community and, and the Islamic religion. And yet they are not too sensitive to vilify all Christians or all gun owners. Every speech out of these people's mouths is about how bad gun owners are. They don't trust you. Now, why do they trust all Muslims and no gun owners? What's that about? Why does Obama have such a um, caustic view of Christianity and Christians, such as, example, he brought up the Crusades a few months ago, remember that? Never talks about the Muslim crusade that is ongoing around the world. Now, again, this is a tough problem. It's a tough problem for all of us. 
People in this country are furious right now. They know the government is either incompetent or, let us put it to you this way, 